Hi everyone, welcome to Free Daily Bread. Um, this will be the ending of um, chapter, chapter 5. So I did the first half and I'm finishing off now, starting in verse 11. Let's pray first. Heavenly Father, finishing chapter 11, thank you so much for your word. So we can have a, a just an awe on what you have done for us. And we need to, re, we need to be reminded of that daily. And that's what we're here to do, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, chapter five, verse eleven. So, in in verse nine and ten, there's 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 a major. Jesus has the scroll in his hand, and now there's like a massive worship ceremony going on right now. And now look what happens, verse eleven. And beheld, and I, this is John. Remember, John is still watching all of this. Heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts and the elders, and the number of them, this is the angels, was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. <sighs> wow. Okay. You can't even imagine what this looks or hears, what it looks like or what it even sounds like. So not only are the four beasts and the 24 elders in praise to Jesus, now countless angels join in. This 10,000 times 10,000, thousand, 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 a thousand, a thousand, this means millions and millions. Millions. Billion? Maybe. Yeah, I definitely believe there's a lot more angels than there are humans. That's for sure. How many demons were inside of um, one man? Okay, and called himself Legion. Okay, Legion is a Ro is like a small Roman army. Between 3,000 and 5,000. And all in one man. There's a lot of demons. Fallen angels, unclean spirits, whatever you want to call them. And how many did Satan take? One third. So if there's billions of it and billions of angels... And Satan took one third. You, we have no idea what the spirit realm looks like right now. They're all over the place. Pray every time when you leave your house. I don't care if you're checking the mail. Pray for the armor of God. It's not to live in fear for the demonic realm. But we, we need to be aware of the demonic realm. Amen. And plus, they're more scared of us. So, here we go. Massive angels joining in. All of heaven is in a reverence for the Lamb who now has the title deed to the universe. Even though angels are not redeemed, they still praise God for redeeming us. It's only the fallen angels that hate us. The heavenly angels love us. They actually find it fascinating that we could ever believe in what we'd never seen. They watch in interest how humanity responds to the gospel. That's in 1 Peter 1, um, 1 chapter 1, verse 12. That they desire to look upon how we react to the gospel. That's interesting. That's interesting. Verse 12. And what are these angels saying? With a loud voice, they're saying this. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Amen. With a loud voice. Millions and millions, maybe a billion angels are all saying this at the same time. I bet it's making heaven shake. There's just no movie that can even... That's why there's no movie that has ever um, tried to even duplicate Revelation. I heard that Mel Gibson was trying to do it. He's the only one that could. Uh, he's the only one that could. But it still wouldn't be half as close. But he could probably get pretty close. I mean, he could do the best out of all directors is what I'm saying. Um... Verse 12, 
This scene is amazing. Millions of angels with a loud voice praising Jesus. These angels clearly see the greatness of God's work in redeeming fallen man. So they now give him praise. He is the worthy one who has all power, all riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. This is a set. Notice the word. This is seven. So you'll see seven everywhere in scripture. Seven characteristics of Jesus right here. Interesting, seven is completion, and it's interesting that the Antichrist has the mark of the number six, isn't it? The unholy trinity. Six, six, six. Jesus governs not just as creator, but as redeemer. Only those who truly know God are the ones that praise him. Let me say that again. The only ones that truly know God, they have a relationship with God and they really love God. Those are the ones that praise him. But many know God just like a demon knows God and they don't obey. So you can either know God and have a relationship with God and obey him and praise him. Or you can just know him and give a false praise with your lips while you live in disobedience. That's your choice. He wants you to know him and have a love that honors him. Does your love for God honor him with every action that you do? Every. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see who lives their lives to now glorify God. 13. And every creature, I find this to be one of the most fascinating verses. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such are in the sea and all that are in them. This is what John heard them saying. Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sits upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. Okay, this is wild. This is wild. I think I sat on this one for a whole day when I first read it. I find this to be one of the most fascinating events in world history besides the second coming of Jesus Christ. Every creature that is alive, that means on earth, that means those that were left behind under the earth, that means in hell and in and on the sea. Okay, listen, Christians, our peanut brains can't fully get this at this moment. Everything that has breath is praising the Lord right now. Everything that breathes. Does this mean unbelievers? Scripture does say every knee will bow and confess, does it not? Is this a force of confession even from the mouth of the enemy of Jesus? Is this a loud confession from even demons and Satan all at once? Some don't think it's every creature. I do. You know why? Well, because he said every creature. What's every mean? Every even beasts of the earth join humans in a praise to God. It's a universal praise. When Balaam wanted to curse the Hebrews, Christians, you should know this. What came out of his mouth? God made him bless them instead, did he not? That's Numbers 22, I believe. Those that curse God... Why couldn't God force an all-at-once confession for who he is all at once from every single soul, even those in hell, all at the same time? And this is what we and they say, blessing and honor and glory and power to the Lamb on the throne who reigns forever. Look at Philippians 2.11.
And that, what's the prophecy, Christians? Every knee shall bow of the things in heaven, things on the earth, things under the, look, this is it. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. This is it. This is it. I believe this is the moment of that fulfilled prophecy that every single soul, believer or not, confesses with their tongue who is Lord all at once. Imagine the shock of unbelievers when they're all having their stupid protests and all at once they say this. They're going to look at each other like, what was that? What was that? Oh, the aliens made us do it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Just think about that. That's wild. Um, yeah, me personally, I believe this is the moment of fulfilled prophecy. Every soul confesses. That's what the Bible says. That's what this is going on right here. And if Jesus wasn't God, this would be idolatry. Because we don't praise the creature like Jehovah Witnesses. We praise the creator. It's the creature that praises God. The creature doesn't praise the creature. The creature praises the creator. <laughs> 14. And then the four bees and the four bees said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him that lived forever and ever. Verse or chapter five ends with the four beasts and 24 elders saying, amen. As they fall down and throw themselves down to worship Jesus. Only God gets worship. Here, all of heaven worships Jesus because Jesus is God, God, the son. This is a form of complete submission as they worshiped him on the ground. This is the Eastern method of worship. You see, the West are mostly too prideful to ever get on their knees and worship God in this fashion. But yet we get Muslims who now are in the West who do it multiple times a day to their false God. They'll even stop traffic, get out of their little rug and do it in the middle of a traffic jam. Shall a false God get a better position of his followers than Jesus? Look, I'm not saying you got to stop traffic to worship our Lord or in the middle of the grocery store. I'm just saying, where, we, where do we pray wholeheartedly, Christians? In our private room, shut the door. But really, when's the last time you got on your knees? When's the last time you fell flat on your face? We should do that more often. We're going to be in heaven. Let's start now. Um, this is, uh, let me see. Hold on. Yeah. False God Allah. His followers are very devoted. How devoted are you in prayer and private to God? Today, people bow to mere humans, especially in the Asian culture. Do not bow to no human, only God. When's the last time you got on, like I said, on your knees to pray, okay? Full submission. Like I said, well, in heaven, that will be the normal position for anyone at the throne. Let's get used to it now. You got bad knees? Get a pillow. That's why we were created to worship God, and that's why the humble only get access to heaven, because the prideful can never bow to God. They'll never get on their knees to God. They hate him too much, because just like Satan, well, they want to be God too. So we need to be aware of how we are really praying to God. Are you really in it? Before you pray, make sure that, that your flesh should be crucified all day. All day. 
especially before prayer. What do we pray in Christians? Spirit and in truth, not flesh. Never pray in the flesh. That's not a connection. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, what a time it will be to witness the confession from every soul since Adam and Eve to praise you all at once. You alone des deserve all glory. And when you receive the scroll and stand in preparation to stand, to send your wrath on earth, everyone gives you praise first. You are a God of war and a God of love. You are a God of justice and a God of mercy. You are a God of holiness and you don't ignore sin. Sin must be punished. People are offended by your true characteristics. And most importantly, the main reason for the seven-year tribulation is not for the tribulation saints. It's not even have anything to do with America. The main point of the seven-year tribulation is to keep your promise and redeem Israel. So I'm praying for Israel for you to protect them so that this one-third remnant will be bigger. The more Jews that return home from anti-Semitism, that's what anti-Semitism is for, Lord, I see. That's why you're allowing it. To bring your people home to safety. That's how you're calling them home. It's, an, it's amazing. So the more you call them home, the bigger that one-third will be that you can protect during the tribulation. Everything is for your glory. If only people just thought more spiritual, they could just live in a joy and a hope in these last wicked days because we know that you are the one on the throne. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.